what's up? It's not a race. Try chewing it. Yeah, it is a race. Everything's a race. Except when it's an endurance test. Long as you can go without changing your sheets. Or your shirt. Sometimes it's eat it quickest. Other times it's who can make it last the longest. He cheats. He cheats. We're going to knock all that on the head now, though. We could rent a DVD tonight. Get out a rom-com if you want. I'm not bothered. You've got ketchup on your chin. Oh. Your phone's switched off. Oh, are we sulking? I might be. Look, I need Paul to be protective. I need him to play the hero. Yeah, and I could do without the humiliation of being slapped down like some sad perv. <laughs> oh, you're not fun, you. How long's this mind game gonna go on for? Well, till he's begging me to let him burn the place down. Oh, right, ask a stupid question. And once he thinks that him and me have got a future together. Did you spend the night with him? Do you want another slap? You sidestepping, Leanne. All right, I went home with a stress-induced migraine. He was really worried about me. I was brilliant. Golden Globes in the post, love. And then I spent the rest of the night trying to phone you. Only you were sulking. I don't have to be in work for a couple of hours. Good. It's a pile of dishes in the sink. Oi! Oh, <laughs> so violent. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Now, come on, I'll just run the hoover around and give everything the wants over. I don't think so. We'll be fine, honest. Oh, all right. Well, no huffing and puffing when your mum asks you to do errands, right? And keep the tea flowing. Don't wait to be asked to put the kettle on. Oh, now, yes, now, there are two throws in the airing cupboard. Now, she'll probably need those over her knees because you get quite icy when you're sitting stationary. Come on, all I'll right, get them. Gran. It's OK, we'll sort it. <sighs> right. See you later. Bye bye. Dear me. She's well on your case. <laughs> nah, she's got you paranoid. It's a party piece. All right, well, what if your mum remembers? I mean, what if she walks in here and it all comes flooding back? It'd be like a reconstruction, only she'll be in it. That's why they do him, to jog people's memories. What memory? She's confused a weather field. All right, well, what if it comes back? It's not going to happen. You don't know that, David. I do, though. Trust me. Her short term, it's shot. How's things? Oh, you don't want to know. Your mother's got a lot to answer for. I got a postcard from her this morning. She's had a frown lines Botox and her teeth whiten. She's way bye bye to red wine and curry. Mm. I'd rather have yellow ashes. And she's going out with an Elvis impersonator. For real? Oh, even she couldn't make that up. So are you still going to evict our Kirk? Oh, Fizz, why can't you just move Chesney back in the flat with you? Oh, come on, I can't just uproot Chesney like that. Whereas it's fine to uproot my brother. No, you're twisting it. Look, he can't help it if he's still in love with you, you know. You just used him. How the heck? Well, he came in pretty handy when you were all loved up with Stape. He was an unpaid babysitter for you 24-7. Excuse me, with Kirk and Chesney, it's hard to know who's babysitting who. You were free to focus on your love life. With the bloke that you dumped our Kirk for, in fact. Nice. And we all lived happily ever after, not. Kept on the doorstep. You know, I'd have had a warmer welcome if I'd been selling pegs. Cheeky beggar. <sighs> yeah. Oh, thanks, Maria. <sighs> Do you know, I actually think I could crack that Tina if I could get her on her own. She'll end up being as hard-faced as your grandson. Well, I've got to get used to me sticking my beak in because I'm not deserting Gail now. Ah, oh, Gail will be all right. Jason, we should be worried about. She gets so much more rest at our house, Bill. Yeah, but being at home might jog her memory, eh? Yeah? Do you know, actually, I don't know if I want her to remember or not, to be honest. I mean, sometimes ignorance really is bliss. Who invented work, anyway? Some sadist. Do you know, I'd be a great wag, me. I'd have 500 quid facial every day, cocktails with the girls, I'd have designer handbags in every colour. You'd die of boredom. Hey, I so wouldn't. Because you're knight in shining armour. Right, behave yourself. And what are we going to do? Walk two chevrons apart, blank each other? Shut up, you could ruin everything. Oh, yeah, with your master plan working so brilliantly. It's called the long game. Let me 
everything all right? Yeah. You sure? Oh, have you got a problem, pal? It's starting to look that way, yeah. I think you should keep your distance, pal. She's not interested. Come on, I'll walk with you. Thanks. Oh, you will get your reward in heaven for this, lads. I'll take mine in pints. Hey, there'll be no freebies here. Are we late? Lads, Ooh. it's the uh, trouble and strife. <laughs> Vincenzo. Hey. <laughs> Vince. Donatello. Don. Hey, yeah. You've got yourself an Ailish rock chick, Vern. Hey, cross between Susie Quattro and Lulu, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Should see her in leather. <laughs> Right, Vernon tells me you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she thinks you're a pair of moonlighting musos who don't know the difference between a chisel and a chuck. Uh, we're a persecuted minority. Aye, oh, right. smokers. Uh. The underclass. We aren't going to build you any old shelter. It's going to be a labour of love. Bom, 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 bom. No, hang on. Now, I don't want them too comfy out here, because if they're gassing, they're not going to be in there spending, are they? Mm. Right? Let's rock and roll. <laughs> right, where's Ryan? I'm going to thrash him at keep you up here. Gone into town. Already? Yep. Got about two syllables out of him. Couldn't get away quick enough. What, has he gone on his toes? Just him and his iPod. I was all set for a big catch-up, but... Well, I remember when my mum had the big catch-up look on her face. Me and Andy used to run a mile. Hi, Amor. Oh, welcome home, <laughs> darling. Hey, welcome home. We can sing a bit of Peter's and leave, if you uh, like. I'll pass, thank you. Oh, there we go. Back on terra firma. Yeah, well, this thing makes it look worse than it is. Hey, good to have you back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We can manage from here, thanks. Uh, look, would you mind just holding on just a second? Are you sure you wouldn't prefer to come back to my place? Ma'am. I can take better care of you, Gail. Grant, what is your problem? Uh, no disrespect to David. I'm sure he'll do his best, but I... Yeah, all right, all right. Shut up, Audrey. Keep your mouth shut. Sounds good to me. Thanks again. Right, come on, then, and let's save these wheelies for later. <laughs> you just keep your eye on the road, you. He's just what the doctor ordered. Yes. <laughs> You all right, Mum? So frustrating. Yeah, but you shouldn't rush it. I must have been up there. And then... I just can't piece together the little bits I do remember. Yeah, well, you're stressing yourself out now. It's no good. It's just one big blank. Look, Gran will be on the phone for social services if you get stressed, so... Whoever that is can do one. <laughs> what a charmer. Yeah, well, you need your rest. If I get any more rest, I'll go spare. I don't think she's really up for visits. Well, I'll not stop long. Sorry, it's just so bad timing. Is that Eileen? Yeah, I'll not keep you, Gail. Let her in, David. Hiya. Oh, I'm um, brought you these. Oh. That's really kind. Well, I'm not stopping. I just wondered if anything had come back to you. I mean, I'm sorry to pile on the pressure. But you'll do it anyway. The last thing I remember is that slanging match with Jason. I'm sorry. Do you honestly think he'd leave you lying there, Jason? No. I don't know. I wish I could remember. Look, I think he better go. If I could clear his name, I would. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll come back to you. I'm convinced of it. And in the meantime, I'm in very good hands here. David's missed his vocation as a bouncer. Welcome your night in the pub. Fancied a bit of peace and quiet. Because home's such a hellhole. You're right. 
I used him. But I didn't set out to, it just sort of... Well, like you said, I was all loved up. I know you didn't do it deliberately. Kirk's more like a brother to me now. I don't want to send him the wrong signals. Any signals. Yeah, I know. That'd be using him all over again, wouldn't it? I've got to prioritise Chez. He's only 13. I need to work something out that'll keep him happy and doesn't drive me insane. Otherwise, he's gonna end up back in care. I get it, Fizz, honest. Hey, you got off a bit handy this morning. Fancy going into town. Hold on. Well, me and your mum didn't know whether to take it personally or what. Definitely take it personally. So come on then, you haven't told us anything about this trip. You sound the official secret sector, to me. I surfed a lot. In a minimum of 20 words. It was okay. I got on with Nick okay. He's cool. Right, well, I'm very pleased for you, mate. Hiya. Yeah, and it's a big deal in your life, and I'm very chuffed for you that you've bonded. Is my mum. Well, I think your mum was hoping that it might have gone a bit pear-shaped. You might have chinned him. Tell you what will make a day, though. Conversation. About Nick? Well, about anything. I want to go around to his this weekend. Do you reckon she'll be OK with that? I don't just think, mate. I know. Not talk to her, will you? We've been love yakking. You big kid. Should I sort you out some crayons and all? I wish we had one of these at home. You want to get out more? Um, how was your lunch? You have the perfect wife. Did you bake that bread yourself? Yeah, I was up at the crack of dawn. Yeah, up at the crack of five to nine, more like. I slave for hours to give it that shop bark taste. Kirk still getting on her wick? Mmm. It's not ideal, is it, sharing with your ex? It's my idea of hell. I wish there was something we could do. Like what? Well, Fizz needs to be there for Tess. She's still got social services breathing down her neck. Might you be hatching a cunning plan? If our Kirk wants to stay with my mum and dad for a bit, give Fizz a break. Hmm. But? Kirk's skin. So we pay for his flight. Oh, I knew you'd say that. Well, his family and his stick it on the plastic. Oh, your soul looks like me, you. This is very true. <laughs> Told you David could manage. Yeah, well, I hope you haven't been overdoing things. Shazam. I'd be very well looked after. I've got flowers from Sarah, chocolates from Eileen, and David's gone to the library to get me a stack of corny romances. Poor Eileen. It's a phrase I never thought I'd say. Well, with the police breathing down Jason's neck. Yeah, I know. Jason would never leave me lying in a heap. Mm. Never say never. You can't remember, can you? Anyway, it'll all come out in the wash, won't it? Come on, love, you look tired. Try mm. and get some sleep. Tina and I can have a catch-up, right? We'll get to the bottom of it soon enough. Mm. <laughs> you can't give them seats. They'll stop out here for hours. No, bit, no, they're them uh, slopey seats. Like rubbish ones in bus stops. <laughs> Yeah, they can perch and puff within a bus stop style concept. What are you on? No, <laughs> we can call it the uh, Siggy station. The fag break. Oh, oh, <laughs> cooking with gas. <laughs> Is it really going to look like a bus shelter? Like a distant cousin of. It's more of a gazebo style concept. A gazebo style concept. In a whitewash yard up a back street ginnel. You being negative, darling? Do you really have to knock through? Well, we can't expect the smoking fraternity to go out the front door and all the way around. <laughs> they might as well walk home and light up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we knock through, build a shelter. Jobs are good, then. Bish, bash, bosh. bosh. I thought this was meant to be a simple job. Omelets, eggs. We'll have it done in no time. Thank you very much. See you again. Bye-bye.
Here we are. Put it towards the condo in Florida. Good. Bread and jam, more like. That bad. Do you have to be loaded to be a tax exile? Oh, poor baby. Do you know, I've been tossing and turning all night. Thinking about me? Obviously. Yeah, go on. Oh, I just had this mad idea how we could solve all our financial problems. Rob a bank? <laughs> Even madder than that. Tough spell. Oh, no, forget it. I won't be brave enough anyway. What is it? Oh, you know, just one of them crazy things that seems like a good idea in the dead of the night, but... Well, the trouble is, I woke up and it still seemed like the answer to all our prayers. I'll back you all the way. You do know that. <laughs> yeah, you say that now. Oi! You're not on your own. Now, what's this mad idea? <laughs> like I say, I won't be brave enough. Probably I'll go horribly wrong. <laughs> oh, one sec, excuse me. Hi, mate. Right. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, hiya. Hiya. Oh, I feel sick. Is it because you opened the door? No, because of that thing. Three for two in fresco, so I got six for four. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so, how's the job situation? Rubbish. Oh, that's someone will turn up soon. Listen, it's Mum's birthday next week. I can't go halves on a present unless you sub me. Oh, I was thinking of sending her something extra special. She's not 60 or anything, is she? No, she's 52 and she'd murder you if you heard you saying that. No, the present I'm thinking of sending her weighs about 10 stone. Answers to the name of Kirk. Hey, you're going to post me? How'd you fancy two weeks in Cyprus, all expenses paid? Me? Yes, you. Mum would be made up to see you. And you could do for a bit of sun on your pasty face. Nah, I better not. I can't leave Chess. Well, he's got fizz now. I believe in it's a cope single-handed. I feel tight. Kirk, tough, you go in on holiday at our treat. A bog standard shelter for smokers, I say. Leave it with me, he says. Now, it's a walk through gazebo concept. And dumb and dumber are knocking holes in back wall. Well, on your head, bit. Oh, thanks for your support, Steve. Oi, sneaky! I prefer tactical. Can I have a game? Yeah, just wait until I've thrashed Steve and then you can be my next victim. Oh, can I now? Right, getting a bit cocky out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, concentrate, please. You're <laughs> seriously losing it. You're mental. And you are still the most ticklish boy in the world. Thank you. Loser. Who's loser? Oh, no, how did that happen? Have you uh, told about Nick yet? What about him? I was wondering if, um... Well, would you be OK with it if I went to his on Saturday? Of course. Why are you looking so worried? I'm not. Oh, I think they do a good, eh? It's nice to get away from that central heating, isn't it? A bit of fresh air. <laughs> well, there's nothing like the smell of the old wheeler bin. <laughs> You've got an answer for everything you, Mel. <laughs> uh, just a minute, Tina. Um, you know you said David was with you? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, just tell me again what time he came round to your place. Quarter past four. Sorry? Quarter past four. Oh, right. Well, it's very precise, isn't it? Quarter past four. Oh. Yeah, well, it was. It was quarter past four. Now, can I go in, please? I just wondered, freezing. though, did you make a mistake? I mean, you could have been confused, lovey. No, I get confused all no, the time. I wasn't confused. Well, maybe David was confused, right? I mean, listen, maybe you thought it was later, but it was David that said it was quarter past four. No, no. I remember the big hand was on the three and the small hand was on the four. Tina, I know how persuasive David could be. We've pussyfooted around him for the last few years just to keep him sweet. And I know what a terrible temper he's got and all when he's pushed about. I really don't need to hear this. In fact, I don't think we've done him any favours at all because he's turned into a very nasty, angry young man. Well, like I told the detective, it was at mine at quarter past four. Yes, and I don't think I believe you, madam. 
So if you're lying to protect David, I think you should say so. Oh, get off my case, will you? I've made my statement. I think underneath all that, lovey, is a very truthful girl, and I don't think it lies easy with you to lie. Can you get out of my way, please? You must love David so much to lie to the police. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? Oh, Tina, come on. There's still time to put things right before things go spiralling out of control, which they will. So come on. Now is the time to tell the truth, Leader. Your mum's back then. Oh, good news travels fast. How's your memory? She still knows all the words to yes, sir, I can buggy. But as for the important stuff, say, who pushed her down the stairs? Gone. For now. Oh, well, for good, for all we know. That's a bummer for you. Oh, no, I'm just biding me time, mate. Cos when it all comes flooding back, she'll remember who shoved her. Yeah, she might. I'd probably leave country if I were you. I hear Milan's quite nice. I haven't done anything! Yeah, tell it to magistrate. Won't be surprised if it was you. You know, I'd love to stay and listen to your fascinating theories, Jason. It's just I've got stuff to do. Mum's expecting her library books. Chicklet, if you're interested. I don't think she's really into whodunits. Look, no one's buying your blue eye boy routine, okay? You can twist this all you like, okay? The bottom line is you was having a row about Sarah and you lost it. When I left that house, Gail was alive and kicking. What, are you sure you were your girlfriend? Stay away from my property, okay? And stay away from my mum. Or I'll have you done for harassment. You know I'm innocent. And she'll remember, and when she does it, it'll all come on top. <laughs> Coronation Street continues in half an hour. Oh. Emily collared me and said I should get you some arnica. I've never heard of it, but apparently it makes you feel better. <laughs> oh, David. What? Is it wrong? That's what she said. No, it's right. Never thought I'd see my David running round Weatherfield trying to find little goodies for his mum. Yeah, well, you just take a couple of pills a day, something. David, put the kettle on, will you? I think that hospital's dehydrated me. Well, I don't believe that. Tina, you all right? Yeah. I thought you said you are going to be five minutes. Have you been round about? We're not. Just having a catch-up. Do you want to come and help us with the shopping? Right, I'm off. Hey, we're nowhere near finished yet. No way, I promised Maria I wouldn't be late. Then join us. You and Maria have a couple of drinks in the Rovers. Sounds good to me. Good. Give you a call. OK. Bye. Carla. Oh, for Pete's sake, yeah. All right, then. See? It wasn't so painful after all, was it? You know I'm not going to be done for ages yet. Have a rush. So we're all going to be playing happy drinking buddies, are we? Why not? We'll never be blood brothers. But you care about him, so he can't be all that bad, can he? But I can tell you're upset. Am I right? Tell me. It's nothing. Not really. She just... What? We were just chatting, for goodness sake, David. She keeps on asking me about the day. You know. What's happened? What's going on? Nothing. Ram's upsetting Tina. Making out that she's a liar. I don't know why she's doing I it, I have but... not called anybody a liar. Going over and over. When you got to mine, when you left. Couldn't it be wrong about the time? Ma'am, I was just chatting. I thought maybe if she could remember somewhat important... Right, there's nothing to remember, right? She wasn't here, just like I wasn't. I'm sorry if that disappoints All right, you. David. No need to get worked on. Oh, well, if I can't even chat to the girl... Ma'am, uh... stop it. We will not have Tina nagged and bullied. She doesn't deserve it. All right, so you go, lads. Best yeah. Vickies, put her on. Uh, you haven't done out. Oh, you can't get anywhere without a bit of preparation. Uh, we've been preparing. Mm. What, for three hours? And measuring up, assessing the job. Assessing? 
thing is... Why does my heart stop when I hear you say that? <laughs> we need a bit of money up front, mate. For materials and that. Well, 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 you've had your advance for the materials. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, but, but, but... <laughs> we accidentally sort of... So, spent it. You promised me you wouldn't. You, you, you promised. <laughs> we, we got mixed up, you know, my money, his money, your money. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. Great. Hey, well, we need membrane and sharps and concrete, screen. Yeah, right, right. No panic, just let me, let me, just let me think here. She'll understand. <laughs> what? You're crazy, man! No, 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 no. Whatever you do, you mustn't tell the missus. You've let me down on this one, lads. These things aren't, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can tell you're not married. Right, forget the tease. Let's get some chuffing work done. I'll come up with a cunning plan. So come on then, and tell me. What? Your fabulous plan to solve all our problems. Oh, no, forget it. Just ignore me. I was being silly. Mm. Tell me anyway. No, look, I'd never be brave enough anyway. Lee, there's nothing you can't tell me. Nothing that'll shock me or make me laugh. Look, or... just the timing's all wrong. Forget it. Who's that? No one. Well, you're full of secrets, you, aren't you? All right, all right. If I tell you, it goes no further. Hey, look, you don't have to say yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Just tell me, Leanne. Well, we're broke, aren't we? We've both got thousands tied up in this place. If only we had what we'd ploughed into this flaming disaster, then we'd be all right. Go on. Well, we're working long hours and worrying. And I've come up with an idea that could get us all our money back and even a bit more. We're all paid up on the insurance. Right. This place burns down. No one loses. We get our freedom back. Just a thought. Hey, what for two, is it? Come through. Pinnock, don't do that to me. Putting out rubbish used to be a simple domestic task. You're a hell of a scary old bird, missus. You two have made it more like sticking your head up above the trenches during the First World War. What? That house is shaking so much, me smoked haddock jumped off the table. Well, you should have killed it first, love. <laughs> I am not your love. I am an elderly, frail woman. Frightened out of her wits by two sledgehammer wielding yobs. Oi! When's it gonna stop all this row? <laughs> Great! Stereo! <laughs> Have they got planning permission for all this? Ah, uh, I'm really sorry I will get all this noise stopped right now. That's when you put up notices, isn't it? For planning permission. You know your stuff, love. Oh, I'm nobody's fool. I watch all the makeover programs. Right, well, I tell you what, I will sort this out now, and I'm so sorry you've been disturbed. It will not happen again. Right, you two jokers, come on, get this lot packed up for the night. And I mean packed up. Don't want any mess left lying around. All right, love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm wonderful, me. The Rovers return, public house. Twinned with bare root. There you are. Ooh, thank you. Got everything you need? Yeah, she's got me and Tina to worry about that. I'm being very well looked after, thank you. Feeling very spoilt. As long as they don't go off and leave you stuck here on your own. Grant, why do you always think the worst of us? I mean, me, all right, I'm used to it, but what's Tina ever done to you? I'm not arguing with you, do. I just don't understand it, Mum. What's in it for her? Why does she want to make it look as I've done this to you? I don't want anything of the sort. You know, it's bad enough getting it off Jason, but my own Gran. He should know better. He's right, Mum. We've had enough arguments and suspicion. I'm tired. I just want to rest. David and Tina are looking after me, and so far they're doing a very good job of it. Right. Well, I still can visit my own daughter, I hope. Visit, yes. Interfere? Here we are, Manchester. Early flight to Cyprus tomorrow. Seats available. Oh, brilliant. Sooner the better. 
Fizz. Oh, come on, you know what I mean. I'm fond of Kirk, but you have to admit, he's not the easiest person to live with. You'll get no arguments from me. I do appreciate what you're doing, paying for his fare and everything. Oh, cheers. Thanks. <clears throat> it will be all right, won't it? A few weeks in Cyprus, you're joking. You'll have a great time. Yeah. All right? Fine. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have said anything. What? Look, just forget everything I said. It was a stupid idea, crazy. What will we do with the money? Well... I mean, you must have thought about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course I have. I thought we could maybe pay off all our debts first. That would make sense. And then? And then we could get another business. A better one. The both of us? Well, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Unless you don't want to. No, no, I, I do want to. The house white, is it sweet or dry? Uh, it's medium. Right. Oh, and they also want a pudding wine. What is that? <laughs> a dessert wine, that's sweet. Hang on a minute. So, uh, we'll talk later then, yeah? Yeah. Have a nice plate of pasta, eh? Look, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I thought you were spending the evening with Gail. Yeah. So did I. Well, they are meeting Jason. We're celebrating getting the contract. Six months' work, if it all goes well. But you don't look like you're in a party mood. David knows what's happened to Gail, Bill, I'm sure of it. And that young Tina isn't as wide-eyed and innocent as she seems. I mean, simple question, just twitching with nerves. You didn't say anything, though, did you? No. Oh. No, just a few gentle questions. Well, you keep this up, and Gail's going to tell you we're clear off. Ah! Well, she's more or less done that all right, eh? Huh? She's made it perfectly clear she's siding with David. <sighs> Bill, I am so worried. I mean, here am I, just, what, a hundred yards away? Could be a hundred miles away. No, all you've got to do, keep friendly, eyes and ears open, and keep that mouth of yours shut. Yeah, I know. Just smile and nod, but say no. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, Bill, I hate it. But knowing that she's in that house practically helpless and David's ruling the roost just like he always wanted to. <laughs> Not even end, so you didn't disturb us. Oh, well, Blanche was very upset. <laughs> yes, we heard about it at great length. Well, I just wanted to apologise, really, and just say that it will not happen again. <laughs> no way. So we best be off then, because I've left Betty holding the fort. But all the hammering will be over and done with it in a couple of days. He promises, don't you? <laughs> Sorry to disturb you, Blanche. Ten minutes under the shower to get the bricks out of me hair. Sorry. Oh, you're both very sorry, I'll give you that. I haven't got planning permission, you know. Mom. Two half-witted labourers wielding sledgehammers. They apologised and that is the end of it. They're insured, are they? These uh, demolition experts. None of our business, either way. Well, of course, if you don't want the council sniffing around, you could tell your so-called builders to fix the dodgy roof in our backyard. Sorry? The coal house. Oh, uh, right. Mum, mm. stop it! Just take no notice of her. If the council does come around and you're still working, it's going to be terribly expensive. Legal fees and all. No, we, we, we'll fix it. Not necessary, really. Won't cost much, just be a couple of days' work and, and it'll be fine. I'll, I'll get the money from tomorrow's banking and, and, and we'll do it, yeah? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Right, well, come on, Mrs. Let's, uh, let's get going. <laughs> right. Good night, Deirdre. Good night, Liz. How could you do that? What? Blackmail them like that. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. It's threatening them with the planners if they don't fix our coal house roof. That is blackmail. Pretty devious, Blanche. I work for the planning department. I know that. That's what's making them sweat. Any work they do for us could be seen as a bribe. Oh, that's right. Throw it back in my face. I don't know why I even try if this is all the thanks I get. Oh, well, here they are. Over here, lad. 
Oh, Mum, I'll get the drink. Oh, no, you won't. I will get these. Oh, you're a nice man. Mm. What would you like, Eileen? Oh, just use your place. Right, I'll give you a bill. Hey, go on, man, Chase. Have a shot. Oh, no thanks. Ah, oh, come on, lad. Something to celebrate. We play this right, we could be in work for months. I mean, I've tried to talk some sense into her, Eileen. She won't listen. Well, you're a mum. No one listens to the mum. <laughs> Till it's too late. <laughs> Look, I'll be very grateful. I know you and Gail haven't got on, but... Oh, go on, then. I suppose I could keep my eye on her. It's not out of the goodness of my heart, though. I mean, if I can nudge Gail's memory into remembering that Jason had now to do with a fall, then it's worth a try. Yeah, do Oh, lads, they... I've worked the magic. Should have some cash for you tomorrow. Hey, that'll be quick. Well, it's an advance on a bit of work for next door. Don't call me Mr Fix-It for now. <laughs> and you pull a mean pint. Ah, landlord, rock god, employer. Is there no end to my talents? Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <sighs> Why have I got to go out? We're just taking that hound of yours for a walk, that's all. I'm not a kid. I know I thinks I need him here looking after me, but I don't. I know that. He couldn't look after a pot plant, could he? <laughs> I'm not deaf, you know. Oh, Chez, I'm just talking to Kirk about our mum and dad. It's not about you, honest. Don't you back out now. You should go. We'll still be here when you get back. Come on, come on, Mike. See? Chesney really wants you to go. He says he does. Oh, Kirk, you're not going to back out now, are you? I've rang Mum. She's dying to see you. Is it Fizz? Does she want to get rid of me? No! No, don't be daft. It's just like we said, Mum's birthday. Mum, uh, I think I get on a wick sometimes. Fizz, not Mum. Look, she doesn't want to get rid of you. But I just think Fizz needs a bit of time on her own with Chesney. Oh, right. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. I'll go and see Mum, then. How do we get to the airport? Oh. We've hired a donkey on roller skates. How do you think? Dope, eh? Did she manage OK? Yeah, just about. It's knackering, isn't it? Listen, I'm not going on. Yeah. You are. Are you sure you didn't say anything to Audrey? I said what you told me to say. My grand's a real expert, you know. About getting stuff out of people. Yeah, well, she didn't get anything out of me. I didn't drop you in it, all right? Yeah, all right. But... And I'm sick of people asking and asking and looking at me funny, then asking again. No, no. I'm sorry, don't let it get to you, all right? It's just me and my big mouth. Fish bash, <laughs> Hi. Oh, hi, you two. It's a bit late, isn't it? Uh, it is, yeah. Oh, However, a uh, white wine for Deirdre and a half for me, please. Uh, we, um, just wanted to let you know, before... You buy any materials or anything like that, we don't want any work doing. You're joking. You, you know, it won't cost you out. Not even so. You're going to tell the council about what we're doing? Uh, what are you doing? The, you know, the, the building works. What building works? Yeah, we don't know anything about that. We haven't heard a thing. You know, apart from Blanche, and she gets tinnitus anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you had me then. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll get these on the house. Well, we can still do a deal, you know, on, on, on the roof. No, because when a roof gets in that state, well, I mean, one good downpour, it, it could just come crashing in. Twice the work. And, and the lads are here now, you know, they're, they're very reasonable. 50 quid should do it. Oh, thanks, Vernon, but no thanks. Go and sit down, shall we? I'll, I'll bring them over. Okay. <laughs> thanks. I'm assuming that was our money. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, what are we going to do now? What are we going to build your shelter with? Well, I've done my bit. Now it's up to you. Right, I've done us a nice carbonara. Oh, Paul, look, I should have said. So you send Amber home and I'll serve it up, all right? The thing is, I'm not sure anymore. I'm not sure I ever was. It's a daft idea. I think you need me over your head. No, just get rid of Amber, then we can talk about no, it. No, there's no point. I haven't got the nerve. But I have. You? I'll do it. Uh, what? Look, Leanne, 
I'd torch a dozen restaurants for you. You must know that by now. Do you know what? You are my hero. Uh, Amber, time to go home, love. I'm going. Um, the carbonara? Oh, sorry. Look, I'm sorry, Paul. I've got such an headache. It's all the stress. I just need my bed. Right, yeah. So, um, Lee, what were we talking about? How does Monday grab you? Yeah. Yeah, great. <sighs> so, uh, do you have a subcontract? Us? We're sub, sub, subcontractors. We're the end of the food chain, lad. Why, are you looking for work? No. No, they're not, cos they've got enough work on as it is. Haven't you, lads? Yes, yes boss. Well, good luck. Hey, do you mind not trying to use my pub as a job centre? I've given you good money up front for a job you haven't even done yet. That, that was just a bit of answer. <laughs> While we're at it, he might be managing this job, but I'm the one who pays the bills. And I know the number of the Trading Standards Office. <laughs> <laughs> and the tax office. I believe they have a hotline these days, don't they? And they're very, very hot. I'm declared income. Don't you let me down. Good evening. Paint, please. Two glasses of red wine and an orange juice. Uh, I'll get these, Liz. Thanks very much. Hey, uh, we got that work on the flats. Ooh. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I put a good word in for you. I thought you must have. Nice one, mate. That was untypically nice of you. What? Recommending him and his thick little mate. I don't know what he's on about. I've never recommended anyone for anything, mate. Quite right. If they mess up, you get the blame. I've never recommended anyone either. So, why the Mr Nice Guy act? You've got to keep them sweet. You never know when you might need a favour. <laughs> That's terrible. Good business sense. You men! Honestly. He said he'll do it on Monday. Are you sure about this? He'll be fine. But you've thought about it, because I don't want you jumping in both feet. You could end up in the nick. <laughs> no, why should I? He said he'd do it. I'll have an alibi, so nobody can prove anything for any of us. I suppose so. Oh, you've got me all worried now. Shall I call it off? Dan? You've just got to think it through really, really carefully. Yeah, I have. Arson's a really serious crime, you know. I can deal with it. She's asleep. A light's on. Yeah, she's asleep. Well, I can see the light off the telly in the window. OK. She's asleep. Well, when she wakes up... In the morning. Tell her we came. Well, I'll try and remember. And I... I believe them too. This time of night. They won't leave us alone. Yeah, well, who cares about them? It's everyone. No. Them, Audrey. I can't go around to the corner shop without someone asking stupid questions. Yeah, Tina, everybody just wants to know how my mum is, yeah. that's all. And has she remembered anything? And, and a look at me. <sighs> sort of. Tina, you're just imagining it, babe. No, I'm not. I have to lie and I hate it. I hate the way they pretend to believe me. All right, stop it now, yeah? I don't know how long I can keep this up for, David. All these lies. Next on ITV One. Thick a dum dum, a great balls of fire. You what? Karaoke for tonight. Hey, you and Tell should do a duet. What about uh, Ebony and Ivory? It's Benny Dorm. Next. <laughs>